we had a productive caucus meeting today in a in a new room, uh, but uh, the same uh, energy and excitement um, uh, amongst our colleagues welcoming the new members, of course, uh, to Congress. Democrats are unified. House Democrats are unified. You saw that yesterday. We're unified behind lowering costs, creating good paying jobs, and building safer communities. The contrast between House Democrats on the chaos and confusion taking place on the other side of the aisle could not be more clear. For the first time in 100 years, there was not an agreement for Speaker of the House on the first ballot. Multiple ballots and almost 24 hours later, there's still no clear sign of a Speaker. Let's hope that this isn't a rerun of 1855 and 56 when it took 133 ballots. What we saw was the true character of the modern day Republican Party, obsessed with power and their own personal advancement at the expense of working families and the needs of everyday Americans. That makes it harder for us to find common ground, but that's what we seek to accomplish. We wanna work with reasonable Republicans and continue our record of bipartisan legislative achievements in this Congress, but we need willing partners in order to do that work. And right now, those willing partners are in short supply. I now have the privilege of introducing, uh, for the first time in this role, uh, caucus vice chair, uh, my colleague and friend from California, and, and classmate from the class of 2014, uh, Representative Ted Lieu. Thank you, Chairman Aguilar. And I first want to say that uh, the chairman gave a terrific nominating speech for Hakeem Jeffries for speaker. And I know that Chairman Aguilar uh, had to give that speech three times, and we only nominated one person uh, because Democrats are unified. And if you saw what Democrats did when we were in control of the House, we passed the American Rescue Plan to get our economy back on track. We passed the infrastructure law to rebuild America. And we passed the Inflation Reduction Act to reduce our deficit and tackle climate change. And in contrast, when Republicans are in control, you get chaos, confusion, and crisis. Now, yesterday, uh, many Americans saw this confusion and crisis. And look, for one day, I think uh, there's, um, it was unfortunate. We can deal with that. But now it gets serious because we effectively don't have a House of Representatives. This can't keep on going. You can't have one branch of the federal government simply not function. And so uh, I hope that Republicans are able to uh, nominate and unified behind one person, whoever that may be, because we need Republicans to govern if they can. If they cannot, then they should let Democrats govern. Uh, questions to start? Uh, Javier from Telemundo. Uh, did, you, did you really support a change in the rules for the Riley, the Riley two bills? Uh, look, these are all you know hypotheticals. Um, something like that has has been done you know historically in the past. Uh, we're not going to you know entertain that from from this podium uh, right now. Our caucus is prepared uh, to advance the name of Hakeem Jeffries, uh, the lead vote getter uh, for the first three ballots. Uh, that's what we plan to do uh, right now. Um, uh, but look, we understand the options you know in front of us. Um, but we're not going to engage in, in any, you know, hypotheticals, you know, at this, at this point. So Go. how is guys not um, making an agreement in the base rules? How does that help to the Americans who vote out the new law? Uh, I, I think it's unfortunate. As the vice chair said, this is, this is who they are. You know, crisis, confusion, disarray. Uh, it's unfortunate um, that that's what the modern day, you know, House Republican conference looks like. Um, but, you know, we knew that. Uh, we knew that going in um, to this, and uh, they've delivered exactly uh, who we thought uh, they were uh, in that respect. It's unfortunate, and as the vice chair mentioned, this is going to start to impact, you know, operations, you know, of the House moving forward. Uh, we want to we want to find that common ground. Uh, we hope that there are Republicans that we can work with in the future. Uh, but this is the key organizing principle uh, of Congress, which is the first item of business before our members can take their oaths. Uh, and it's unfortunate. I feel bad for the relatives, uh, the spouses, partners, and family members who came to town uh, for new members. Some of them might have to depart town. Uh, I remember, we remember being new members and what that was like to take a picture, uh, even with this, the speaker of, of the opposing party. Like, a lot of people spent so much time and energy uh, to, to win these offices um, on both sides of the aisle. 
And um, so, uh, you know, I feel for those family members uh, who uh, who now have to navigate those those travel plans. Max. Have you heard reports from any of your members being approached by moderate Republicans about potentially backing a Navy kid as their speaker? Uh, again, I mean, these uh, the hypotheticals. Um, you know, I, I haven't been approached about about any of that. We know that some of those have been um, reported, and some of those I, I don't think there's a lot of basis. In fact, um, we've been very clear that you know, we want to work. Um, we want to work to deliver legislative achievements to the American public. If there was something that that was real, um, uh, we would look at that. But I, I haven't I haven't seen any proof that. Republicans are willing to uh, engage. Lisa? Um, I just want to bring something up that we're at this point where you're hearing me for an ad hoc committee. Um, I believe you all are not members of Congress at all, and you're here to tell us about what you just thought of, and give us this really hot topic right now that we're going to have to sworn in for a year or so to get to the point of having to sworn in. We haven't been sworn in. We're representatives elect. Uh, I'm told that uh, the rules, you know, the laws still apply to us, uh, but, um, you know, we're, we're representatives-elect waiting to, to take an oath. Um, but uh, there could be a point at which uh, it does mean something uh, to the constituents that we serve, uh, whether we can engage in casework uh, on their behalf uh, and help individuals uh, navigate the federal bureaucracy, you know, back at home. Um, you know, we, we want to do everything we can uh, to, to help... Um, you know, right now, you know, our focus and, and we're working with our, our staffs to make sure that we're, you know, following the letter and the spirit of everything that we're allowed to do. Uh, but we don't have status as, as members uh, until we organize. And, and that's unfortunately as a result of, of this Republican chaos. And so, um, uh, you know, there will come points where other things are impacted. Committees can't hire uh, their staff members. Uh, as well, because there are no committee chairs and ranking members, uh, this is this is a, a crisis of the Congress, uh, and it's a crisis at the hands of the Republican dysfunction, and so that's that's where we are until we have the main organizing principle, which is electing someone uh, to lead uh, this Congress and taking our oaths, uh, which is so important. Vice Chair, thank you. I just want to follow up on what Chairman Aguilar said uh, because. We haven't been able to negotiate ratios with Republicans that they've said they can't do that until they have a speaker. Uh, we can't even appoint any of our own members to any committee. So that slows everything down for a pretty long time because we can't even constitute committees. Uh, so this is having a very real world impact. And again, it's because of Republican chaos and dysfunction that, that you're seeing. In front. Our legislative achievements of the last Congress are very clear, uh, and there is important work to be done uh, to implement uh, that agenda. Um, our focus is, is very clear, but the House of Representatives at its core, and as you saw yesterday, is a majority-run institution. Um, there are bills that we need uh, to get done. There are bills that historically have and, and continue to be bipartisan. I think of like the Farm Bill and I think of the National Defense Authorization Act. You know, those are things uh, that likely, you know, could get done um, uh, if we had willing partners on the other side who wanted to work in a collaborative way. Those are things that historically have gotten done, um, and we look forward to working uh, with our colleagues. Um, but uh, our the key organizing principle in front of us is that we have to have a speaker. And you can't have committees, uh, uh, ranking members, and chairs until you have that, that key step, and, and that's where we are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Given your concerns, have you had any conversations or has there been any outreach from the other side of the aisle, and would any of your members be willing to vote press? No, we haven't had those conversations with, uh, with our colleagues. Our colleagues, as you saw yesterday, 
uh, are committed to support Hakeem Jeffries for speaker. Uh, I plan uh, uh, to nominate him again um, at, the, at the top of the noon hour, and we'll have a roll call vote, and we'll see what's changed. Um, but that's on our colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, to determine if, if something has changed. But I'm not aware of any, any outreach. Mariana? I, I, I can tell you that um, uh, the representative Scalise, you know, reached out to, to members of, of our leadership team, um, you know, after our, our internal uh, caucus organizing, uh, he reached out and, and congratulated us on, on the positions. I think he reached out uh, and talked to Leader Jeffries and, and Whip Clark uh, and I, um, and uh, I've had a relationship, a cordial relationship with him, obviously is an adversary on the baseball field, uh, kind of grounded grounded in that um, uh, and uh, but it's it's it hasn't been a working relationship it's just been very you know very cordial um, we respect the the office that that all of them hold um, and uh, so but we look forward this is on this is on them um, whoever they advance I hope it's someone we can work in a positive way for the American public uh, but I don't know if that's going to be Kevin McCarthy Steve Scalise, Jim Jordan, um, you know, chaos and confusion is is the rule of the day over there, and so you know we just don't know uh, what that what that will lead to, um, but um, and many of us individually have come from delegations, worked with members on uh, on the other side of the aisle in committees, um, sometimes on social things like the baseball stuff, obviously. Um, and so some of us have these, you know, relationships where we can disagree. I know the vice chair as well, you know, has relationships at, at where we are going to disagree with our colleagues on the other side of the aisle, but we can still be, you know, cordial about it. Um, you know, I look forward to, to more of that in the future. But the key organizing principle in front of us is, is we've got to elect a speaker and take an oath. I was in the California State Legislature with Kevin McCarthy at the same time. I've known him for many years. Uh, whether or not he's Speaker, it's very clear that that position has already been significantly weakened uh, because of what happened yesterday and what happened before. Essentially, Kevin McCarthy has agreed uh, that if he were to be Speaker, he could be fired at any time if five members basically said they wanted to have a motion to vacate. Uh, so that puts a significant um, leverage opportunity for the caucus and the Republicans to do what they want to fire their own speaker. So I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know they've already weakened that position just by having a, that agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not it's not lost on me. The week that we we have, we obviously have this in front of us, um, uh, and the organizing that this Congress has to do. Uh, but it's not lost on anyone on our side of the aisle uh, the importance and significance of of January sixth uh, this Friday. Uh, I look forward to participating uh, in um, uh, events or in uh, any opportunity that allows you know me to reflect on uh, that day. Uh, all of us in the chamber have our experiences uh, personally uh, from that day, but what that means to the officers uh, who protected this chamber and held that last line uh, on our on our behalf um, and the threat that democracy faced that day. Um, but for me personally, uh, the, the wind down of, of the January 6th committee, uh, the respect and, and reverence that I hold for Benny Thompson uh, and Liz Cheney, uh, and the other members of the of the committee for the work that that they did uh, in advancing uh, that final report. Uh, it's something that I still, you know, probably haven't taken in as as much, um, uh, given the aggressive schedule that we've had and the importance of the work that is in front of us. But uh, my belief in, is that you know Leader Jeffries will uh, uh, will in some way uh, demonstrate uh, that House Democrats uh, are committed to remembering 
uh, that day and the, and the sacrifices of, of those uh, who protected this place, this chamber, um, and this and this democracy. Scott. Scott. The vice chair has been keeping me busy doing this job, so um, so that's my my focus. The caucus uh, work and the caucus role that I that I occupy is the is the, is the primary focus of of me and, and my office. Um, we are all we spent so much time, and some of you I, I've said this to privately, and I probably shouldn't say this publicly, but it kind of feels like camp. Um, you know, the nine of us spent so much time together. Uh, I also feel like maybe we needed a little bit of time apart uh, this holiday season. Uh, we just spent so much time reading documents, sitting in depositions, uh, trading texts and emails. Uh, we still have a group text thread. Uh, we still communicate happy holidays. Um, uh, we want very mindful that a couple members have moved on. Um, uh, very thankful for their service and wish them all the best uh, in their future endeavors. And I look forward to staying in contact with, with those members, uh, the retiring members specifically, you know, Liz and Elaine. Uh, uh, Stephanie and Adam, uh, uh, the, the, the time and space we occupied, 18 months doing that work, just personally means so much to me uh, as a legislator. Um, but uh, at the appropriate time, look, if there's invitations, if there's things, if those members want to get together, uh, whether it's in a social occasion or whether it's in something more formal to talk about the work that we did, uh, I'd welcome that opportunity. But right now in front of us, uh, this is the job I have. This is a job the vice chair and I asked for and, and, and the thing that I want to do, and I want to do it well. Thank you, guys. Yeah, 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 on, on January 6th. I, first, I just want to say, Chair Maggio did an amazing job on the January 6th committee, as well as uh, the entire committee. And the significance of January 6th wasn't just the attack on our Capitol. Uh, it was why it was that day. It's because it was a certification of the Electoral College results. Uh, imagine if we had to do that right now. Uh, we couldn't, because we don't even have a House of Representatives that's been sworn in. So I asked the American people two years from now, would they want a Republican majority in the House who couldn't even get together and swear in members. Um, I don't think the American people are going to want that. I hope they consider that two years from now. Thank you. Can you refer to the two committees? Yes, we have.